my name is Daniel O. Yeah, I've been working for almost six years at Red Hat in a solution architect and technical marketing manager and a uh, developer advocate. So I'm also responsible for CNCF ambassador. You can find my old profile and expertise and uh, my some uh, the uh, technology stuff. You can find my Twitter and you can find my Git report and also I recommend uh, subscribe my YouTube channel. I push a lot of technical demo video and uh, technical uh, tutorial as well. Okay, so here's the four challenges for Spring developer uh, could be faced every single day, specifically container technology plus Kubernetes technology. So first of all, for Spring developer, when they needed to adopt a new uh, application architecture or platform or a business uh, requirement, uh, they need to uh, make a decision which architecture, which platform, which component uh, should be considered at a very beginning, at the very beginning time. For example, we need to develop a serverless application. We need to design reactive application. We need to more scalable, flexible application to deploy Kubernetes cluster, and it should be uh, scale more than uh, thousands of thousand container pods at the same time. So this is all depend uh, the different uh, requirement expectation. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, bother your Spring architecture or application development. So so Spring uh, fundamentally has uh, allows developer uh, less control of flexibility, and also for Spring developer, specifically the beginner or even middle of uh, experience of Spring developer, so they have to learn uh, every single detail of the Spring ecosystem. Specifically, your Spring application can be uh, running on multiple cloud or a Kubernetes cluster, which means you have to figure it out which component or which uh, ecosystem should be uh, integrate your Spring application, for example, Spring Cloud or security or integration with another Spring ecosystem components. So this is a really big burden for Spring developer because they need to catch up this trend and technology every single day. And another thing is developer experience. So Spring is really comfortable to develop every single day on your local machine, but we have to I mean, Spring developer have to uh, consider the remote container environment because the container environment is not an option. It's a default runtime and infrastructure layer to run your Spring application for addressing your business requirements. But in order to deploy your application to container platforms such as OpenShift or Kubernetes, you maybe have CI CD pipeline or GitOps uh, or something like uh, Argo City, but that's uh, not exactly the same capability you can have your, in your local environment. So, so that's why Spring Developer looking forward to adapting some kind of uh, uh, some kind of tool for increase in a local development uh, capabilities such as the build, deploy, and testing, and also keep uh, writing your code. The another uh, the challenge from native comparison. So this is a still only uh, immature technology. Some of people are, uh, think about it. So native comparison make your Java application as executable file, just like a Go. And then you can run that application without JVM, uh, just running on uh, substream VM, just, just part of a component of a Grab VM. So, uh, what is the benefit of a native comparison with the Java application? It allows you have a super fast and a small memory footprint. So just think about it. You have a single Microsoft application based on Java technology, and then you needed to deploy that application on your Kubernetes cluster, but that application should be scaled out maybe 1,000 pods or 200 pods. And then some application takes a uh, five minutes to scale out, but native comparison maybe it, uh, reduce the, the amount of time to scale out, maybe just uh, 
five second or 10 second make that happen to the same scalability. So this is a whole full uh, challenge uh, faces the developer, specifically Spring developer. So we need to something different to overcome this challenge for developers. So today, uh, this workshop is uh, actually designed for hands-on experience, but we have only 40 minutes today. So I just give you some uh, workshop environment so you don't need to install any uh, software or any uh, uh, some uh, command line tool, but you just need a web browser to go through every single lab. But this uh, workshop designed for three hours. For, don't worry about that. You don't need to finish the old labs today, uh, just for 40 minutes, but you just try to understand each labs of, in terms of the goal and why Quarkus, uh, of why Quarkus uh, try to help out the Spring developer to de develop the same Microsoft application, but also uh, how Quarkus uh, overcome that four challenges, but you could still have the same capability, just like uh, you develop a Spring application. We're gonna use the one of the popular common Spring Boot application called out pet cleaning application, and we convert that uh, Quarkus application, for example, uh, the presentation layer and control layer, repository layer, and in the end, you once again strangle the monolith Spring Boot application. Once you already uh, convert to Quarkus, but you once again uh, strangle the Spring Boot application to Quarkus. So let's try to uh, drill down a little bit detail. I'm not gonna steal lots of time from yours, but just quick through, uh, what which lab, I mean, the each lab, uh, what do you learn from the each lab here? The first step, you, you will understand what Spring Pet Cleaning application and which component is, uh, which components are implement on Spring Pet Cleaning application. For example, Spring MVC pattern and the Spring Data, Spring DI and the data multiple Spring components already used the, to develop and implement your Spring Pet Cleaning application. This is a, the general MVC application present uh, web UI and the backend uh, sublet application. In the second lab, uh, you're gonna go through and you're gonna actually get started uh, refactor existing Spring application to Quarkus for presentation layer. So for example, Spring MVC implement based on uh, presentation layers such as HTML and a style sheet and JavaScript, but also time lift to uh, make a you know, more uh, the decent uh, UI. And the Spring and the Quarkus actually uh, can address the same capability and feature based on the Quarkus template engine, though also known as Qt. Uh, the Quarkus plus template is a kind of acronym. So Quarkus template engine uh, designed for specifically uh, represent your presentation layer. And the one of the beauty of the Quarkus template engine, you can have a library coding capability whenever you change code, you don't need to uh, recompile and rebuild, redeploy and rerun your Quarkus application. It's automatically done by Quarkus engine. You don't need to care about that. It, in the end, uh, this capability increases developers' productivity because you can do that in the same application implementation with 50% uh, less time. And the, the lab three is more about the dependency injection. The Spring actually provides the DI capability and Quarkus also provides the context and the dependency injection feature by default. So you can learn how to convert Spring DI to Spring uh, Quarkus CDI. And then lab four is more about uh, data transaction. So Spring Data JPA uh, based on uh, and allows Java developer to communicate your data store, like a database to retrieve data and create data and also insert, update, et cetera, just like a, we can call out the CRUD functionality. And then Quarkus uh, gives some same functionality. It's more than that, uh, based on Hibernate, the or mapping and with the Panache. So with the Panache, uh, the, the developer doesn't worry about uh, creating the getter setter in a Pojo Java classic. And also you can automatically have 
the ORI mapping based on the Panache uh, component and Quarkus extensions. The next lab, uh, now you just done the finish to converting from Spring MVC application to Quarkus. And now you need to uh, think about what is the, uh, another way to optimize or make it better this application uh, fitting in your Kubernetes cluster. So we're gonna use your OpenShift 4 cluster today. And then for, for you deploy this application to OpenShift, we're gonna uh, slice down this application just like a string of pattern. As you can see, we have one single application. We make the breakdown of multiple application along with your business domain, such as the uh, bad business customer service, also from an application, each backend application has own um, the database store like a post SQL here. The last lab, uh, you're gonna uh, add more the Kubernetes native application capability. For example, all Microsoft's application uh, uh, needed to adopt the non-functional capabilities such as the substrate discovery, resiliency, and load balancing, or has to check or to externalize your configuration. This is all kinds of not business functionality, but also, but you have to uh, consider when you implement and develop your Microsoft application for deploying on Kubernetes cluster for distributing Microsoft's application architecture. So the Quarkus allows Java developer to add this non-functional Microsoft's capability easily, simply uh, based on Quarkus extension. So let's uh, get your hands dirty. So here is the uh, how to access your uh, workshop environment today. So everything is already uh, deployed and provisioned and you don't need to install any command line or software. So you just need a web browser. So the Chrome browser or Firefox would be better. Uh, rather than the Safari or Internet Explorer. And I strongly recommend you to raise the current version. And then uh, please turn off your VPN or AdBra because we're gonna use a WebSocket. So if you uh, prohibit the WebSocket protocol, please turn it off uh, during the workshop. And then if you have any question around this workshop or Quarkus or related technology, uh, relate to cloud every application development, please don't hesitate and uh, put on the, uh, your question in the Q and A box. I'm more than happy to address uh, in the next 25 minutes. Okay, so here's a short link uh, to access to our the workshop environment, the Bitly URL, uh, Bitly URL slash devcomp cz in 2021-quarkus-lab. I'm gonna go uh, get back to this page, but let's try to move on. Next slide. So when you access this in the URL, you can see uh, account assess the assignment page. You need to input your any uh, your prepared email address. We're not going to store your email address. It's kind of a pricey problem. So, so we just delete all your email address after this workshop. So put in the, any your prepared email address and a password I'm gonna show you just a little bit later. Once you uh, uh, assign the, print your email address and then your password is upload shift, you will find out your assigned username, for example, user one or user 10 or user 25 and a password upload shift and then, when you click on the module Quarkus for Spring Developer, you will find out the actual lab instruction. So once again, the, our magic password is all lowercase upon shift. So here is a more uh, uh, use case and demos around the Quarkus application. So for example, uh, just I'm strongly recommend you go to my YouTube channel, Bini Yuala Daniel TV, and you can find the tons of the video around the Quarkus application demo, but also more cloud and application development. For example, here, uh, when you uh, this is one of the uh, use cases how to uh, develop serverless function application based on Quarkus, and you can deploy that serverless function to a container platform that should, that just use for a front end application. And this application communicate with the backend uh, distribute data grid based on the Red Hat data grid uh, built on 
infinite span. So once you are from the application have the tons of the natural traffic, the function will be scaled out. I mean, just uh, comes up uh, just in a second and then uh, try to uh, pass down your natural traffic to the backend application like a data grid. And then you will see the data grid will be auto scaled out maybe 10 part automatically depends on, on, on demand natural traffic. In the end, there's no more uh, traffic uh, happen and the, your uh, backend application scale down to a default application such as a two or a one. And then your front end application based on serverless application will be scaled down to zero automatically. This is a really good use case uh, how to implement and uh, deploy serverless application plus uh, data uh, grid uh, for distributed uh, cache application. So I'm going to start my project mode and then just go back to here. So once you go to uh, 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 assign your own username, you can find that uh, here the actual lab environment, as you can see, you just need to go through all lab instruction. This lab instruction, uh, just like the seven step and then it should be takes more than three hours, but don't worry about that. I'm gonna uh, keep uh, live in, uh, this workshop in the end of this day. So after this uh, workshop, you can keep going through this workshop environment, just end of the day. And then when you open your ID tool, you're gonna use core radio workspace. It's based on Eclipse chat, the web ID tool. And then you can find that there are multiple projects in your website, your explorer. And then please make sure to uh, develop or change your Java application code in the right project. For example, the Quarkus Dash Pet Clinic project. Here is a Spring Dash Pet Clinic project. And I'm going to go back to my slash deck and then I'm going to copy uh, this URL. I'm going to put in the chat as well. And I'm going to stop sharing and I'll take a look at the query and it's your time get starting with the, your hands-on experience. Okay, I'm going to... So here is the Bitly URL, Bitly Quarkus-Workshop-M3. This is the 24-7 available uh, the lab instructions. I made this one. This lab instruction will be available anytime, anywhere. So sometimes you don't need to uh, go through uh, the hands-on experience, but you want to understand uh, the goal and what contains have each lab. For example, just go through the Spring DI to Quarkus CDI because you have a lot of experience how to implement Quark the Spring DI. But you're just curious about how Quarkus CDI covered up the Spring DI, and then you don't need to. Uh, you don't have enough time to go through by your uh, dirty hands. So here is the way. Just go to this URL and take a look at the old content to understand how to implement a spring side and how to implement in the Quarkus side. And then, okay, so it could be better. I mean, so the URL, the light of code, pretty much less than spring, I mean, Quarkus side, and also how to implement or what kind of annotation we have to use uh, to implement same features, same functionality, for example, here is the uh, CDI injection. As you can see, uh, the spring side, you have to use like a component annotation or a wire annotation to uh, have the, the dependency injection. But Quarkus side, you just need to use the injection, the inject annotation, as you can see here. So this is just something different in text, but this is a, uh, not a big deal, I'm pretty sure, because it, uh, it's just simple syntax change. So one another good tip of the Spring to Quarkus stuff. So some people ask me, is there only way uh, to migrate EGG Spring to Quarkus uh, to address the full challenges, or even uh, we need to some level comparison because Spring uh, has a plan to support the spring native uh, end of this year, maybe around October or September time period. So we don't need enough time to wait for that announcement. That's why we 
more focused on corpus. And then we got uh, some new pilot project to migrate uh, Spring to corpus. And this is this only way migrate more? Is there any some easier way or some comparable way? Yes, the answer is yes. So the Red Hat provide a migration toolkit also known as MTA, Migration Toolkit for Application, provide uh, some of the Quarkus uh, rules, which means you just unload your Spring Boot application like a job file or export the old file, and then you could just analyze your application, and it will show uh, how to migrate. And also Quarkus provide Spring compatibility. Let me share once again uh, real quick. So when you go to Quarkus.io, this is the uh, our official page, Quarkus. And then you can find the race version here. When you go to uh, Guide and click on Compatibility, this is all about the Supreme uh, API. But not we not we not gonna uh, address all the Supreme ecosystem, but also Supreme uh, all APIs. But we just focus on the common uh popular uh, spring api for example spring di spring web and spring data and uh, spring security spring cache etc uh, this old api means that you just keep using same spring api without no code change because the quarkus will wrap up your spring api and running on quarkus runtime but this, you still have live coding capability but also you could uh, NIB comparison capability with the Spring application. But today in this workshop, we're not going to use this Spring compatibility API. The reason why we sometimes use Spring with the application, have a specific API or a specific feature, which Quarkus does not support with these capabilities. So, so I can show you uh, this is a maybe better way in the end because there are lots of Spring features, Spring component you already are using. So this is the you know, how to refactor your existing Spring Boot to Quarkus, maybe brand new thing. So maybe, but you could still start with the the migration toolkit because the migration the migration toolkit uh, basically. Uh, uses this Spring compatibility API on Quarkus migration. So this is uh, maybe two ways for you uh, when you adopt the Spring to Quarkus uh, migration pass or refactoring pass. The first one, uh, try to use a Spring compatible API on Quarkus, which uh, makes you uh, uh, not so many, not so many change your Spring Boot application. But second way, you need to rewrite all application. But that's not a, a big deal, I guess, and I pretty sure because uh, you already understand the Java sta the standard Java specification and implementation way. So you just spend maybe just two days or three days to understand how Quarkus implement the Microsoft's application based on Java specification. So we already have a great success story already migrate from Spring to Quarkus, and they just spend maybe uh, five day or three day to catch up all Quarkus uh, features and uh, capability. If you go to Quarkus, uh, the user success story, uh, let me show you quickly Quarkus. So here is all you can find the user story, uh, for example, uh, which customer already adopt Quarkus in the production environment, and uh, some of the customer already migrate from Spring to Quarkus, or just develop brand new application based on Quarkus. You can find all that. I'm gonna copy and put on the chat. Uh, you might be interested here. And stop sharing. I'm gonna go back to chat window, and there we go.